In this episode of The Road Chose Me, I'm exploring far off the beaten track in the remote corners of Gabon. Not long after driving into Gabon, I cross the mighty equator. This is the second time in my life I've driven across. Last time was in Ecuador when I was on my way from Alaska to Argentina and my mind is swimming wondering where I'll be when I cross this magical line again. The jungle in Gabon is seriously thick and I explore down a couple of small roads aiming to get to Lope National Park. I follow the banks of an enormous river and I can hardly believe my eyes when way out here in the jungle there's a massive bridge crossing the whole thing. I haven't seen a car in days. How did they pay for this? All the same, I'm pretty happy I don't have to cross this thing on a ferry. I can't imagine that would be a good idea. I'm shocked to see massive green rolling hills always in the near distance. It's absolutely beautiful and I find it hard to believe the jungle isn't thick on the side of them. After asking a lot of people, they confirm that this must be natural. There's just no way that humans did this long ago and they certainly haven't done it recently. So for whatever reason, the jungle just doesn't grow on these big hills. After reaching the national park, I discover that entrance is horrendously expensive, around 500 US dollars a day, clearly outside my budget. I ask around and I meet a local guy called Gislaine who used to work at a guerrilla research centre. That centre has now been abandoned, but after a lot of negotiating, Gislaine agrees to take me in there and take me hiking to search for wild gorillas. We're not going to have much time, and there probably isn't a lot of chance of finding them in only one day, but he says he'll do his best. So we set out on a seriously overgrown jungle track. We arrive at the research station, and again, I just feel like I've been dropped right in the middle of Jurassic Park. After hiking many hours in the morning, I can't believe my eyes when Gislaine points out a huge female gorilla in the tree. She just stares at us and we stare right back. I can hear the big guy in the background, but we never actually catch a glimpse of him. Gislaine is a super interesting guy and I find it hard to say goodbye and push on for new adventures. Gabon's main north-south highway is as good as anything I've seen in the world. I make good time, but it's not really my style, so I turn off and aim directly for the coast. Luango National Park made international headlines when hippos were spotted playing in the ocean and even surfing waves. It's also known for elephants to hang out on the beach there, and so it seems like a good destination as any for me to go exploring small tracks. The track winds on and on through the jungle, seemingly endless. In my usual style, I just stop and ask for directions every time I see locals, and eventually wind up passing through an active shell oil field where I'm required to get a vehicle escort. It's no problem, and the friendly guys are happy to give directions on the far side. If you look closely, you'll see the track is slowly turning to sand. Now I know I'm close to my destination. When I finally burst out of the jungle, the sun is beaming and I immediately set about looking for a place to camp. With green grass and a perfect ocean in front of me, I might just call this the best wild camp of the expedition so far. The water is perfectly warm and I can't help but body surf late into the evening. The Jeep is using a lot of gas in the sand and mud, so I continue on to a small village and for the first time on the expedition, I buy gas from a container on the side of the road. It's clean, but it smells more like paint thinner than gas. I hope it doesn't cause any problems. The last few miles into the lodge turn out to be pretty interesting, with some sandy sections, some river crossings, and even a couple of rocky bits. Man, this will be interesting if it rains. The lodge itself turns out to be paradise on earth and the super friendly caretaker lets me camp right on the grass in the grounds. The following day we head into the park itself and it's absolutely stunning 
to watch multiple elephants walking up and down on the beach sand. At night, we go for a boat tour to find some crocodiles, and I'm a little bit scared when a local guy jumps right into the water to snatch out this baby. I don't know where Mama is, but I don't want to find out. While I'm at the lodge, it thumps down with rain. So when I finally tear myself away, some of those river crossings have gotten a lot deeper. Water comes over the hood a couple of times, and if you watch carefully, you'll even see where the mechanical fan flicks water up and out of the hood vents. Obviously that's far from ideal, though I don't have any problems. I round a bend in the jungle and I'm absolutely amazed to see a male elephant right on the side of the road. He's eating leaves and just stands there and watches me for 10 minutes while I sit in the driver's seat and film this. I absolutely cannot believe I now just drive along and there are elephants on the side of the road. Wow, this is definitely the West Africa and jungle that I dreamed of. He's only a forest elephant, so he isn't exactly enormous, but he still is about the same size and probably weight as the Jeep. His tusks are really brown and his skin is all battered from tearing through the jungle. It's an amazing sight. Further south, I find another stunning wild camp on the beach before heading inland to explore the highlands. Orgabon has been amazing. I know I say it a lot, but I think this is my favorite country so far. Looking forward to what comes next though, it's Congo time.